Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sorful here, and today I just wanted to talk to you guys about the progress that I've been able to make throughout the duration of the Head Start, which has been from October 1st to October 10th. And I just kind of wanted to go through what I've been doing, as well as I wanted to talk to you guys about my thoughts on whether or not the Founders Pack was worth it. Uh, for me personally, I bought the cheapest one, which I believe was $25. I can't remember if that's Canadian or US or if it even matters, but that's the package I went with. They had three tiers, I believe it was 25, 50, and 100, something like that, don't quote me. Maybe it was 25, 40, and 100. But either way, there was three different tiers of packages or founders packs, and I got the cheapest one, which again was $25. Personally, being able to play the game 10 days earlier than the official release to the public for free, I didn't think I'd be able to get this much done in that it's amount of time, on, uh, especially need. since I have other obligations that I have to obviously oblige to. So I was real surprised with the amount that I was able to get done, as well as other players and other people in the game, the community. A lot of players have pretty much, you know, done everything there is to do in Maple Story 2 in that short of a period. So just to, just being able to get to play the game 10 days early for me was alone worth it. However. What makes it even more worth is that they essentially gave us $20 worth of NX in merit points. They gave us 2,000 merit points and each 100 merit points is a dollar. So that's $20 in merit points alone. And then we get the premium ticket or premium pass, which also gives us a bunch of extra benefits and bonuses, which you can actually see right here. You can see all the bonuses that we get and this is actually something that lasts a month and you could purchase it every month for uh, $5 or 490 merit points. So the $20 in NX or merit points and then a 500 merit point uh, voucher for a 30 day membership that equates to $25 worth of in game goods along with being able to play the game 10 days early. So in my opinion, along with all the other things we got, like the purple uh, unicorn mount, which is right here, and all the other things that we get, it's just been so falls. incredibly worth it. It's honestly, it was super worth the price. I'm so happy that Nexon was very generous with that price. I know a lot of people still probably couldn't afford it for one reason or another, and that's truly unfortunate. However, it's not necessarily anything that's game breaking. It's just that we got to play the game a little bit early, and we have this $5 uh, premium club membership, which I would definitely, definitely recommend you guys get. It helps so much, especially being able to take the Roto Taxi all over the place. It doesn't mean that you completely bypass um, traveling to all the beautiful different maps in this game. Because as you can see, as much as I could use my helicopter, I've made sure to go to almost all of the maps. I'm pretty sure there's one or two that I missed. Yeah, a couple over here that I haven't explored yet. But that's definitely on my agenda. I really enjoy actually exploring the map. Um, and walking to each place, but I wanted to do that on my own time when you know I had no more dungeons left for the day and stuff like that. So to kick things off with my progress, I guess since we're already in the world map, we'll go ahead and take a look at my exploration progress. For those of you that don't know, exploration progress is not necessarily by just going onto each map and discovering each map. They actually give you a list of three to five, actually two to five um, quests, so to say, that you can do per map. So right now I'm in the map called Alucard. It's a prison, um, which is right here. And there's three exploration goals here. All towns, I believe all towns anyway, have five exploration goals. And then there's some maps that I just did recently that only have two, like some of these maps. And without trying to turn this into a guide video, if you want to see how many exploration goals you've completed for each map, you can just go ahead and click the show button and you'll see how many stars you've gotten for each map so as you can see there's still a bunch of maps that i could get a bunch of stars on of course i'm only at 61 percent my goal before the game officially launched on october 10th was to get at least 60 percent and i'm happy to say that i met that goal along with meeting all of my other early access goals most of the ones that i don't have are actually ones where you have to go fishing and to fish in these areas you can see at the top there is actually you need a very high level of fishing and i guess that makes a very nice segment to go into the next thing, which we'll say is the fishing mastery. So as you guys can see, I'm intermediate one. This is probably about level five. There's beginner one, two, three, and four, and then you're intermediate one, and it starts again all the way up until master. So it's beginner one to four, intermediate one to four, advanced one to four, and then there's master, master tier fishing. So I'm happy to say that I got to intermediate one. It's a very, um, 
relaxing thing to do in the game in my opinion. Uh, I quite enjoy fishing in game for some reason. I don't necessarily know if there's any true purpose other than being a completionist to actually fishing. But it's something that I enjoy doing when I don't have any dungeons left and such like that. That's the thing I like about this game is that it's not all just grinding towards, you know, uh, gear progression. There's actually some, you know, uh, leisurely and casual and chill type of grinding in the I game that you could do at any point this. in time. So that's pretty cool. It's a really cool feature. My fishing intermediate one. Um, so yeah, that's I'm really happy with that. Next, we'll go ahead and take a look at my character itself. My gear score is 2,415. To be able to enter level 50 uh, entry dungeons, we'll call them, you need to have at least 1,500 gear score. And then to enter the hard dungeons, hard level 50 dungeons, you need to have at least 2,100 gear score. So I'm currently eligible for all dungeons in the game. Unfortunately, I haven't done too many hard dungeons, although there's only two in the game. I've only been able to do one run of the Bell Rod dungeon, or it's called the Temple of Immortals, I believe. So in terms of gear, all of my gear is pretty standard. I have all the level 50 equips. Of course, you get these from doing the basic, so to say, level 50 dungeons or entry level ones or normal adventure dungeons. Um, and then my level 50 epic bow, which is really the big thing of Maple Story 2 right now. Everybody's trying to get epic equips and continue to progress their gear. Um, I just got my bow to plus six. I may have a separate video showing my progress of my bow and me uh, enhancing it as far up as I can, but for now it's at level 6 because that's a comfortable, nice spot. It brings me up to 3000 attack total, which is a pretty nice number, especially since this is a DPS class. So along with my character window, my inventory is pretty filled with a bunch of different things. Nothing necessarily in gear, of course I got this from the Belrog um, uh, raid or dungeon. Um, unfortunately, it's untradeable and bound to the character, yada yada, and I can't even dismantle it, so that really sucks. But anyway, I have 21 mil essentially, and with 21 mil currently, I could buy maybe about 3 epic equips, depending on which ones I decide to buy. And that could bump my gear score up, sure, but I'm actually saving this amount of money f to buy epic weapons for my other 2 characters, because I do have 3 characters at level 50. I have a level 50 Berserker, a level 50 Knight, and a level 50 Archer. And of the three, my two favorites, it's hard for me to choose which one is my actual favorite. So uh, my two favorites are the Knight and the Archer. So I'm definitely going to be spending this money on a Knight weapon once I have more dungeons available for the week. Um, so that's what my money is being saved for. I don't necessarily want to all out on one character at the moment, especially since it'll be more efficient for me to get multiple characters up to that 2100 gear score threshold. That's a bit of a tongue twister. But um, so yeah, good progress on my character. In fact, all three characters. Uh, I've been doing maxed out dungeons uh, daily and weekly. Um, as you guys can see, I have 30 out of 30 dungeons cleared for this week. And I've also cleared a couple dungeons today, but it doesn't uh, show it anymore once you complete your, complete your weekly dungeon. I know will turn out fine. Um, but yeah, so there's no point in doing dungeons really after you clear your weekly amount because you don't really get rewards at all. You only get like 1k meso, so it's really not worth it, which is why I use the time that I have now to do more of the leisure stuff, which is the, you know, fishing, the exploration goals, as well as our next segment, which is the life skills. I've also been working on life skills. These are very uh, laid back and you could do these, you could really bang all of these out within the span of like 30 minutes and you'll be done for the day. So all of my uh, gathering and crafts are about level four to five plus. The lowest I think is level four, but I haven't done it for today as you can see. I can still mine everything. I can still ranch everything. I haven't done it uh, after reset. So all of these will be one level higher. So as you can see, I have level five mining, level four for ranching, level five foraging, and level four uh, farming. All of these will be one level higher after I do my uh, dailies for them. And then in my crafts, they're a little bit higher. I have level six smithing. Again, I could do these dailies as well once I get the materials. And then I have handicrafts at level six, alchemy level six, and cooking at level six. So all of these are pretty uh, on par with each other. And I do this daily as well. Leisure, my interior design, I'm saving for you know the future. Uh, that's something I really wanna put on the back burner for now because there's so many more important things that I wanna work on in the meantime. And then pet training. This is something I also plan to work on later on. The green hoods are depending on me. So with that being said, 
The next thing I will bring up is the daily missions. These are something that I've been doing every single day. They give really good rewards such as uh, enhancing or enchanting materials as well as meso bags to give you some juicy amount of meso, about 250 to 300k per day if you're lucky. Um, so it's pretty, pretty good and yeah, so that's pretty much the progress that I've made so far. Of course, I almost forgot, but you definitely can't forget the trophies. I've gotten a good amount of trophies. I kind of wish there was a ranking for all of these things, just so players could see and compare with their friends um, on a on a true ladder, uh, you know, who has the most of what. So for me, I have 429. I imagine and I'm certain that there's people, many players that have been playing uh, since the head start started on October 1st who have way more trophies than me however i am very proud of the amount of trophies that i have 429 before the game is officially released is a pretty big amount um some of you guys are going to be able to hit this number in no time because maple story 2 is a really fun game and there's just so much that you can do and getting trophies is honestly pretty seamless in in most cases you're just playing the game having fun and you unlock many trophies so 429 um and i think that about wraps up all of my uh, progress. I will show you guys my skill build. This is something I'm working with, rocking with. Uh, this seems to be my favorite skill build thus far. I know there's different uh, branches that you could go into. The bow swing branch, I absolutely despise and I do not like it at all. If I wanted to play close range, I would definitely play I my knight. I can do this. And then Eagle's Majesty and Eagle Claw. This is a build I used in the beta, but I don't like it as much as my current build, which is using the uh, precision shooter, uh, precision precision shooter uh, screwdriver shot uh, combo and then again we have my character tab where uh, I put most of my points into dexterity and I think I have about 10 uh, attribute points invested in crit rate uh, I'm not really sure what a good balance is but I feel like this is decent balance I feel like I do decent damage maybe I could be more most likely I could be doing more damage but you know since the game is so fresh and new for us North American players it's something that we're gonna have to be doing a lot of tampering with figuring it out and um, but for now this is pretty good so I'm pretty happy with all the progress I made as I said earlier uh, if you guys have been playing since the head start please feel free to let me know what your some of your you know highlight stats are in the comment section right below that like button i'm very curious to see what some of you guys have done and accomplished in the short time that the game has been released thus far and i say release but of course we know that i mean the head start period so without further ado guys thank you all for watching i hope to see all you guys in game it's really going to be fun if you haven't played yet and on that note stay calm maple on i'll see you all in game peace